I'm gonna show a little speed drafting real quick. We've got a user that's been having problems with a particular project and I'm gonna show how they could build that project very quickly and get 90% of the way there with their roof tool um, if they were to just follow along with this video. And keep in mind that I'm gonna be going very quickly on this video. What I have here is I've got some space planning boxes. I'm gonna go ahead and use the build tool to build this out. I'll go down a floor, same thing, I've got a floor below. And then let's pull a 3D view and take a look at what I've got going on here. And then um, the end result of this particular project is that we've got a gable here and that's gonna extend out past this deck, but this gable's plate line height is gonna be raised. And then we've got a gable section here, we've got a gable section where there's a front door here, and we're gonna have a gable here where there's a garage, gable on this back end, another one right here, where there's just like a split section. So this is already built correctly. And then there is, in fact, this is gonna be gable, and this is where we're gonna get some complexity and some problems because this is also gonna be gable, which is gonna terminate onto this section right here. So it's building some kind of goofy things here that aren't really what we want. But I can tell you that just working from this, I can manually edit this very, very quickly. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let me go up a page and I'm gonna go into my working roofs view here. And this is gonna show me, there we go, there's my roofs. And I'm gonna get into our roof dialog menu, which is in the build roofs section here. So uh, if you're on a PC, Alt B, R will get you into this dialogue. And then, um, actually, I don't even need to do that. I could, in fact, come in here if I wanted to and do a little trick where we throw a window in here. And with that window, I could say that there's a gable over this window and there's an overhang, etc., and then resize the window if I really wanted to trick the software into doing some funny stuff. But the other thing we could do is just get into that alt build roof menu. And then we could come in here with a gable roof line, which is the G key, and just draw that in as well. So there's gonna show our gable roof line. I gotta kind of bring it out here. There we are. And now I'm building a gable section here and maybe it goes all the way to the end. Then this in, something like that. That'll just get me started. Now I could just copy, paste, reflect this about, get this on the other side, get me to that front door area here and really, feel like I'm about 90% of the way through of this, this roof system here. So I'll show you what the next steps are. Um, one is that I'm just gonna put this roof in plane. So I'm gonna use the coplanar tool and that's gonna turn off auto rebuild roofs. And now I'm coplanar with this roof. And if in fact that did work, I'm not sure that it did actually. Let's try that again. Let's just try, we're gonna join roof planes here. If it doesn't work, yep, it's not gonna get there. Let's try this one instead. Nope. That's because these are not, in fact, they are, in fact, coplanar. So we just have to drag this a little bit closer to that edge for it to pick up. And then we could just union this. Don't need to retain the original objects. And then based on where this ended up, and knowing that this is maybe the center line of what I need here, it would be easy for me to just copy paste, reflect this about the ridge and then select this edit line and join this plane. And there you go. Let's just say I'm done in this section. And then kind of the same thing here is I could just make this coplanar or I could just break this, extend a little section out if I wanted to. Um, it'd be really easy for me to just pop this down. It can make a break just inside of this and then drag that edit handle and cross itself and cut that excess out. That would be really simple, but it didn't leave us anything that we can reflect about center, right? So that's maybe not helpful. So let's use that coplanar tool. And then once we have those coplanar, and actually that dropped this down by accident. Try that again. I'm gonna make this guy coplanar with this guy. There we are. And now I know I'm gonna reflect about this. And we could just union these together. Don't retain the original objects. We get kind of a funky shape, but that's okay. If it crosses itself, that's fine. We could cut this excess off and just use our join root plane tool to join that back up. Super fast, super easy. 
same kind of thing join roof plane tool join that back up get rid of this lower plane so this is like a real kind of hacky i don't really care kind of a of a approach to this right like it seems to be working just because i'm just kind of fl flippantly going through this right well it does in fact work like this as we can just cross poly lines cut poly lines they'll automatically merge they'll automatically do things that we need them to do the more you understand how this tool works it ends up being a really quick and easy tool for doing things so kind of the same thing here is we've got some kind of weird little funky funky detail here we could just cross this you know cross itself that's going to cut that excess out right and maybe we don't care about this we could also copy paste, paste hold position. Now we've got a copy of this, bring this forward, make a break right here, and we could cut this down on this side, leaving us just with this square, just so we can copy paste, reflect this about this side. So you can get a lot done in a 3D view with these methods. Same kind of thing, I wanna just bring this back, that cut that excess out, copy paste about the center of this deck, and then I can merge these two roof planes together and extend this out over the deck. And then just make sure that this is in fact coplanar with this and union the two. Don't need to retain any original objects. And look at this. We've almost got this section of deck built out. Super fast, right? Super, super fast. So we've got these two guys. We can merge them together, union them. Don't need to retain the original object. We could kind of stretch this back if we wanted to and then get this up and kind of snap it, get it close to where it needs to be and then use that join roof planes tool. And maybe I've got a few extra breaks in here is all that's happening. So when you got an extra break in here, it's pretty simple. You're just gonna take one of these and kind of cross itself again just so you can get this back to where it needs to be and then try that join root plane tool again look at that now there's um maybe there's an overbuild condition here we're not sure but we do have a break on this side so that means we can just take this and snap that up there and that part's done and i mean that's it this is pretty much done. I think actually there was a gable end on this side, so maybe we do have to do something with this. Um, and then this never got unioned, it looks like. Oh, because there's a break in it, that's why. So we could take that, overlap it. Don't need to retain the original. Same thing, kind of cut this. It's real easy once you get used to this little workflow, right? We break right here, cut this across, now you got a flat section that you can snap to itself, right? And then it's going to auto merge collinear and we got to get rid of some excess roof plane or something. Kind of that same thing, just cross itself, cut it out, get it out of the way. Now, if this was a gable end, this would have been a good opportunity to just bring this out like that, right? Till it cuts itself. You could, of course, copy paste, reflect about, look how crazy this is, right? Cut this, bring this down, that makes it chop, bring this to the corner, and union this. So simple, simple methods for doing a lot of this stuff. Let's get rid of this. We don't even need, we don't even really need this, do we? We could break it chop it, do whatever, throw this down. You could almost just copy paste reflect about one side or the other, right? So we could just bring this back to itself. Oops, and cross it. Simple, 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 simple. Hopefully you're getting the pattern of what I'm doing here. There we are. This is pretty much what this needs to be looking like. And then this one was a garage. We got auto build foundations on. We've got some terrain here. It would be pretty easy to model this terrain. Let's get down to that first floor, get to a working terrain view. 
there we go here's our terrain right there and then just need to throw in some elevation lines so we could just do like a continuous section here where we're just building out a polyline right at the front of the house close polyline open that up say the interior is flat right and then we got a couple more here maybe this one's negative five feet and then we got one down here that's negative 120 or something and then we just have to adjust our terrain up so maybe it's negative 96 or something like this probably actually closer to like 100 and there we go looking pretty good Kind of the last little edits is you might come in here and edit your um depends on what you're doing here uh a couple different ways you can do this if you were to say for this rail style you were to say that this is a post to beam look what it's going to do right but maybe we don't want that right maybe we want our beams up against the wall itself so the other thing that you could do is you could come in here open this up go wall type define make a copy uh rename it heavy timber to rafter or something like that or to truss who knows and then let's say that the thickness is um i don't know let's make it a, a, a an eight by and our stud width is going to be the same as our thickness and our spacing is going to be i don't know 96 on center and we only need a single top plate count and the top plate width is 12 inches 11 and a half inches whatever that is and that we don't have a bottom plate right and let's just take a look at what this does when we build it and we need to make sure that this is no longer a railing right so it's going to show up as just solid we also want to make sure that it's going to in the structure panel balloon through the ceiling above all right now let's build that and we're going to show wall framing in this view and look what that does it gets us kind of close to a heavy timber setup where then you could then you could take um if i get just back to the working plan view we could take this wall here and let me just make a um we'll do a copy paste reflect about the corner and that's going to overwrite some of this wall but don't worry about that I'm going to come in here and say in the general panel that it's got no room definition. And then we can take um, with that no room definition, continue this wall this way and take our heavy timber wall back. Right. And so it should have a railing coming through here and then set your offsets or you can manually edit your newel posts to wherever you want them. All right. And then the last bit of this is that we do need to make sure that this is um, a closed wall system. So. We've got some disconnected wall system, right? So we gotta extend that out. So this is still creating that deck. And then you can come in here and manually edit the framing members if you'd like. So that's one way you could start with some kind of heavy timber setup here um, and have it kind of be auto built. I don't know, some creative things thinking outside the box. So um, anyways, hopefully this video helps anyone that, that caught this, hopefully, um, it helps the original person that was having trouble kind of building this roof system and uh, put it on a real slow speed and enjoy.